I'll wind through this hopefully to give you enough time to think through what I'm about to present to you. And it's slightly cruel um, to give these to you as starter questions, but you know what? Um, if you have a look at these two questions, you do actually know everything you need to at this point in the course. So hopefully it serves as a, serves as a helpful moment to remind you, ooh, if this is a struggle, that means there's a skill that I need to put more effort into mastering. So let's have a quick look at each of these. I've begun, sorry, let me make it a little bit higher for you. I've begun in question one by recognizing I've got some factors on my denominator here that I want to break apart. I want to use these partial fractions, this partial fraction idea that we uh, mentioned very recently. You can see though the particular original fraction uh, that I provided, actually sorry, it's my fault isn't it because I asked you to open blinds and has made it hard for you to, can you completely not read that? Uh, I, I was looking at different angles to read parts of it and I just neglected this a plus 10. Yeah, yeah, I completely messed up your ignore, ignore, integral, didn't we? Um, let us know if it's completely illegible for you. Uh, but you can see, given the particular fraction I started with, because you've got this uh, unfactorizable, at least over the real numbers, this unfactorizable x squared plus 4, it ends up being one of the denominators of your partial fractions, but because you have a quadratic denominator here, uh, which you might have noticed from the handout is our theme for today, you end up with this linear factor up the top on the numerator. When you have a go through, you can see uh, I've gone through it. Uh, it's sort of a version of that third strategy. What did Mrs. Lee's call it? Divide and conquer, I think. Uh, you can see I've broken it apart. Going back to from this line with all the fractions in it, I've multiplied through by my entire left-hand denominator, giving me this set of terms on both sides, and then I choose appropriate values of x in order to try and pin down what a and b and c are. So the particular value that I chose to get rid of b and c, you can see is x equals 2. You see that x minus 2 factor there? You chuck in x equals 2, everything here disappears, so you just get left with a times 2 squared plus 4. Here's my 4 plus 4, that gives you value for a. When I have a look at this next one in here, uh, because I've got A, the value that if I most easily choose it to get rid of, say, B, um, that I can choose is x equals 0. You see B is attached to that x right there. So if you let x equal 0, B disappears. So I already know what A is. B is gone. That just leaves C just right there. And you should get a value of negative 1. And then I've kind of done a mix and match thing here. If you want to take us back to that idea of MasterChef and the mystery box, like, yes, there are classic things which go together. You can use a pure cooking technique to prepare a dish. but one of the things about being creative is you can mix and match different things. So I've decided to go and for the last one, for the last coefficient, which is b, I've decided to equate some coefficients. So I noticed that on the left-hand side, how many x squared terms are there on the left-hand side? There are, there are none of them. In fact, you just have 3x plus 10, right? So there are zero lots of x squared. I know that there's an a x squared right here, and I know what a is. And then I'm going to get, even without expanding, I can see, I'm going to get a b x squared over here on the right hand side. So therefore, there's my 0x squareds over there, that's a, and there's b. So that leaves me with a value for uh, b when I evaluate that. From there I pop it back into the original integral and this is what pans out. You can see there's my a on x minus 2, there's my bx plus c on the other denominator, and then I just need to do that uh, tidying up work to finish off what's going on down here. Got a pair of logs, and then you've got some inverse tan here, which hopefully we recognize from extension one. Okay, so that's that. Let me just quickly walk you through this derivative right at the very end here, which is going to be one of our segues into the final uh, this, sheet, this worksheet that we're going to work through. Uh, differentiating this log ends up with, well, this is my f dash on f. Do you see that? If I designate this inside function here f of x, then when you differentiate a log, you get f dash on f. It's not immediately obvious, I would say, at least to me anyway, that the most obvious next thing to do is to pull out a factor of 1 on x, uh, 1 on the square root of x squared minus 7. It's not immediately obvious that that is useful, but once you realize you can get actually, if you have a look here, 1 on square root of x squared minus 7 times the square root of x squared minus 7, that gives you the 1 you got on the original f dash. And then I've taken out that factor or that denominator there, so you just get left with an x. And if you look carefully, I've highlighted them just to make it obvious for you. Even though they're backwards in order, you've got the same thing appearing on the numerator and denominator. It's a common factor, right? So that's why these both go. 1, 2, leaving you with this term, whoopsie daisy, down here. Are you okay with that? Following all right? Uh, I do have, just for the sake of it, over here, this is me recognizing 
I'm just cognitively overloading myself trying to do this square root of x squared minus 7, trying to work out its derivative whilst also trying to do um, all the differentiation here. So that's why I did it off to the side, got that result, and then off I went. You okay with that? Happy? All right. Could I turn your attention to this piece of paper, which some of you have already begun working on because you can. But uh, before we dig further into it, I just want to explain everything that's on there and why it leads to an issue that I'm trying to solve by giving you this handout. What you have to look at the top of the page is straight out of the syllabus. That M-E-X, that's a code within Ness's documentation that means this is a mathematics extension to uh, topic, uh, the extension one topics so are just called ME whatever. So MEX, it's extension two, uh, C1, so the C stands for calculus, uh, and then further integration is the name of the topic. There's other stuff under here, um, outcomes and all that kind of thing, which you can look up on Ness's website, but the particular part we often focus on is the content bit. Now, I just want you to have a look at these dot points. I want you to have a think which ones we have had a look at, which ones we've explored, and which ones we have not yet. Have a look at the first one, that first dot point. Does that sound familiar? What do you think? I'm getting some nods, right? I would have called this, in fact, not I would have, I did call this, unspecified substitution. In extension one, we've looked at finding uh, integrals using the method of integration by substitution. That's a mouthful for you. But the substitution was already given to you, or always given to you in extension one. But you may like to highlight, and I'll do this on my page, you may like to highlight this may not be given. That's the unspecified part uh, that makes extension two extension two. We'll skip over the second dot point and return to it shortly. What else do you recognize? Have a look at the third point. Does that look familiar? <coughs> dot point three, I hope that rings bells because we literally just used it in the last five minutes, right? Decomposing rational functions, that's a function that's a ratio of two other things. Decomposing rational functions are into partial fractions. So that right there should ring a bell. And of course, we have actually, if you just carry that on, we have looked at the fourth dot point two, using partial fractions to integrate functions. We kind of did them all in one hit. Now you've got three dot points down beneath, which maybe look less familiar. I, have, I did mention them in our very first lesson within this topic, uh, but we haven't addressed them. But I thought, you know what, for the sake of completeness, I'll put it there. Let's return to this second dot point, which as you can see, me bolding it and also the uh, title of this sheet, it's what's going to be the subject of this lesson. Just read it with me, right? It says, get the appropriate color here. It says, rational functions involving a quadratic denominator, and then it gives some suggestions for how we can do this. Uh, and when it says suggestions, there's this wonderful little phrase there, which uh, it's kind of like, yeah, get out of jail free card. See that little phrase there? Or otherwise, uh, <laughs> when I got my job here, uh, when I first arrived here at Cherrybrook, uh, my job description as head teacher math said, it, it listed out all these things, and then it said right at the bottom, this final dot point, and other duties as required by the principal. It's like, oh great, and anything else Mr. Johnson would like me to do. Uh, when you see this phrase here, or otherwise, it means completing the square is useful, but sometimes you're gonna have to pull a few other tricks out of your hat, and that's what we're gonna have a look at down beneath. Now we've got sort of six different kinds of integrands, the things that you integrate, which you can see have some form of quadratic denominator. Now, I just want to wind you back to what my experience of learning these the first time was like. It's a bit like this. I don't know if anyone remembers when this switchover happened, uh, when I assume several of you use several of, if not all of, these uh, apps that Google has on smartphones. I remember seeing the new icons, I can't remember, some number of months or years when they came in, and something not quite right, like sitting with you. I was like, I don't like them, but I don't know why. Like, they're obviously nicely designed, and it took someone else, some, um, an actual uh, UX, user experience designer, put together this little image. He said, well, this is the problem, right? If you just kind of squint at your phone, and let's be real, right? You wake up in the middle of the night, if you're like me, you're like, uh, I don't know, which one's which, right? They all kind of look a bit the same. Now, the first time people meet integrating this vast variety, excuse me, of functions or rational functions with quadratic denominators, do they all look a little bit like that bottom row? It's like, how am I supposed to tell these apart, okay? Some of them are easier to tell apart than others. And what I want to try and do is get these thoughts down. This is the important part, right? The way not to learn this is, 
here's the thing, and here is the integral. Okay, and just try and memorize that. I'm gonna tell you right now, you will fail. Okay, because you'll be back in this situation and you'll just, you'll be in an exam, you'll be under pressure and you'll just rush. And if you don't understand, if you've got no reason to think, I can work out which one is which, then you're just trying to trust your memory, which under exam conditions is not the uh, most reliable thing.